Skyline Scream is one of the weirdest and most frustrating drop towers out there. Located indoors at the Nickelodeon Universe theme park at the American Dream Mall, this SS creation certainly has a notable location. But this rise among the most unreliable drop towers out there. Find out why this ride can be so difficult to experience in this review. Skyline Scream stands 125 feet or 38 meters tall. It's marketed as the world's tallest indoor drop tower, but I don't quite think that's accurate. Fantasialand has Mystery Castle, which is an enclosed 213 foot or 65 meter tall drop tower. Then stateside, you have both Walt Disney World's Tower of Terror and Disney California Adventure's Guardians of the Galaxy, which offer a 13 story drop in a nearly 20 story tall building. I think the record is meant to say the world's tallest drop tower at a fully indoor theme park. Skyline Scream narrowly beat Galaxy Land Space Shop for that record, which also is an SNS creation. Skyline Scream is a different model though. This is a combo tower with a unique twist, literally. This is a rotating drop tower, which means the vehicle can rotate at the top before the final descent. This grants everyone a full 360 degree view. Whether you experience this rotation or this attraction altogether is a bit of a wild card. This is a shockingly unreliable attraction. It's weird to say that about an SNS drop tower because they're typically pretty reliable, but not this one. Skyline Scream has been closed in half my visits. And based on reports from this park over the past year, this ride's uptime is still not that great. And on days it's open, you may get an abbreviated cycle. I've heard of this one only running as a space shot, then I've also had a ride where it east stopped at the top and it was lowered slowly back down. When this drop tower is running, you most certainly know. This is a deafeningly loud attraction. You can hear this ride's compressed air echoing through the park, particularly near the attraction. Skyline Scream has a special section of the roof built to house this tall attraction, so it is neat looking upwards. It makes the ride feel even taller than it really is. In general, I like the look of this attraction. You have a really cool photo opportunity out front with Hey Arnold and some seats. Then the green and orange paint scheme differs from the usual white on other SNS towers. This attraction seats 20 riders in a ring. If you've ridden Hershey Park's Hershey Tower, it's a similar setup. The over the shoulder restraints look similar to the other ones. They aren't as free as some drop towers, but they're fine. These ones don't have the seat belts to accompany them because they're the newer ratcheting style. I've never had to wait for this attraction which is nice. The big issue is whether it's open. Once dispatched, you raise upwards and await for the launch. There is a spiel alerting you to when you'll launch, but I've ridden enough SNS towers that I can tell based off the ride sounds anyway. The launch is actually pretty good for an SNS. It has some oomph at the start, which is surprising given it's a smaller one. You do slow down by the top, so you only get weak floater airtime up there. The best SNS towers for airtime are either the early space shots or the smaller double shots. You then stop halfway up the tower and slowly rise back up to the top section. You have glass windows up there, so on a clear day, the view is great. You slowly get one full 360 degree rotation, so you can see New York City in the distance. You can also see all the New Jersey highways and the HVAC equipment for the mall, but let's focus on the positive, the New York skyline is beautiful. You also have these platforms with some familiar Nicktoons, which is a fun feature. After you pause, you drop, and this drop is odd. The initial descent is pretty slow, and it induces just a small pop of air time. Halfway down the drop though, you get this second burst of acceleration that causes a slight tingly sensation, akin to a Moser Jr. drop tower. I cannot think of any other drop tower with a two-part drop like this. It's analogous to a pulsed launch on a coaster. While that second burst caught me off guard, the overall drop is still pretty weak, especially for a ride of this scale. I've been on junior drop towers that pack more of a punch. You then slowly lower back down, ending the experience. So what would I rate Skyline Scream? I would give this SNS drop tower a 3 out of 10. This ride is certainly different. It's the first SNS tower with rotating seats, and getting a combo tower indoors is fun. And the view at the top can be good if it's clear outside but this ride's power left me wanting more. While the launch is fine, in fact the launch is decent, the airtime on the space shot mode was lacking, and the descent on the turbo drop mode was surprisingly slow. Add in how problematic this attraction is, and it really is a disappointment. 
It's not a must at this park, but if you see it open, I'd ride it soon because it could go down at any point. So those are my thoughts on Skyline Scream, the weird drop tower of the American Dreams Nickelodeon universe. What are your thoughts on this ride? Do you have the same issues with this ride as me? Let me know your thoughts down below. If you enjoyed this review, I'd appreciate it if you gave this video a like and you considered subscribing because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.